of, of a generation where we had Nixon, we had Reagan. Everybody would pick holes in presidents and Clinton, obviously, with his, his philandering. Yeah. Why do we look at the, what, say, happened to Bill Clinton and what FDR was getting up to? It appears to me we look at those two things in very different lights. But, I mean, they were both very sexual men, both very sensual, both yeah. led, effectively, two lives. Well, of course, the, the real extreme example of that is, is John F. Kennedy. Um, but, right, uh, crucially, you know, we live, we live now in different times. We live in times of the greatest transparency. Um, FDR was never seen in his wheelchair by his electorate. Um, FDR's uh, frailty was, was protected from the world. Um, the only two photographs that exist of FDR in his wheelchair were in fact taken by David Tipton. And we criticise the establishment now for, for PR spin doctoring. It's, it was effectively the same thing. It was more than that, wasn't it? It was actually withholding crucial bits of information from, from, from the public. But one has to ask oneself, was that necessarily a bad thing? Are we suffering from a kind of surface? transparency now which we are seeing sort of uh, <coughs> homogenized blandness in our industry as a director i mean you have a a, a talent smorgasbord uh, half your work must have surely been done even before the camera started rolling i think the phrase talent smorgasbord is one that i'll use again <laughs> you are more than welcome to <laughs> but it is though isn't it I mean you know Laura Linney Bill Murray you know Olivia I mean the whole literally everybody in that cast even some of the smaller bit players it, it just gels it just works it, I mean it, it's it's Christmas yeah well that's part of your job as a director is to cast the very best people and you're right it makes your job so much easier if you get the right actors in the right roles does it take half of the fun out of it though because you effectively you know the, the work is done for you no. <laughs> Um, now, people say that we, you know, when we sort of see public figures, whether they're presidential, whether they're celebrities, we see too much these days. Um, it, it's kind of interesting because obviously a lot of these letters were found when uh, the character died uh, at the age of 100, and only then do we find out. That stuff was always there. I think it's how we consumed um, the, the secondary information, the, the scandals, etc., etc. Well, it was, I, I mean, I think in this case it wasn't always there. I think it was a genuine shock when Daisy died, and uh, you're right, she died in the 100th year, and underneath her bed was a, a kind of treasure, a treasure chest filled with these redacted letters and diaries. I mean, she did, she did um, remove everything. Um, she did remove Daisy's you know, tapestries, which, of course, I was now to admire and most deeply. I was going to say, that must have sparked your curiosity. And Hot Dog Gate played a big part in this movie. Yeah. Where did that come from? Was that actually a real thing? It or? was a real thing. That was a real thing. That was a real event, yeah. I mean, that was like a political tool. It was like Eleanor Roosevelt wanting to show these royals what pluralistic America was really all about. But it became interpreted differently. It became a great kind of propaganda tool for the king. The posh kid who took a bite out of a... Of a, of a, uh, you know, a hot dog became a, a major symbol of, hey, he's one of us. Never has a wiener been more vital in history, I would imagine. I would agree. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very Good much. to meet you. No, it was a really interesting movie. Um, it was quite a different film to, to what.